Okay, cool. I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to be very honest because this is going to help you out to see whether you're actually doing this the right way or the wrong way. When you study and when you revise, do you have a structure? Do you have a structure in what you're doing? That doesn't mean, and by the way, I'm not referring to, okay, I'm going to study two hours in biology and then I'm going to do one hour in maths and then I'm going to do an hour in chemistry. That's not what I'm referring to. What I'm referring to is exactly when you're actually revising, do you have a structure in what you're revising? You see, I made this mistake quite a lot of the times at the beginning where I would say to myself, okay, I'm going to go and revise maybe two hours of biology and I revise for two hours of biology and then I do some questions, but quickly realized that there was no structure in what I was doing. And in my head, I thought, okay, yeah, I revise for biology, now I move on and I do chemistry. And I could have saved so much time if my revision, my studies were very structured in exactly what I wanted to achieve. The question that I ask you guys is, do you know what you want to achieve when you're revising and when you're studying? Because that's the question I had to ask myself after faulting so many times. Do you know what you want to achieve when you're revising? Take it from me, there is ways that you can revise and study effectively. And a lot of the times what we do is we just pick on a certain topic, we just revise, we have no structure in how we're doing it, but we think the fact that we're here sitting down and working is us being productive or we're studying effectively. That's not the case. That is not the case at all. You've done the first step from my previous videos. I'm sure you watched it and you've probably done the first step where you've got a timetable for yourself. But now what I'm going to urge you guys to do is go deeper. And the reason why I'm saying to go deeper is because you will be able to study way more effectively and more efficiently, which means that you don't even have to spend so much hours, like 10, 12 hours. You don't even need that if you're able to structure the way you're studying. Now, some of you guys are probably already doing this. Some of you guys know how to revise. This video is not for you. These are for the people that need help, need a bit of guidance, advice for how they can go about revising efficiently, productively, and get the best out of their revision. So going back to what I was saying, you need to have a structure in how you study. You need to know what you wanna achieve in that study period. So let's say you wanna study biology for two hours or revise for biology. You can use this for any subject. Have you set out what you wanna do? Do you know what you want to achieve after those two hours or during those two hours? Have you asked yourself that? Because I know I haven't done that when I was revising. I just thought, okay, let me get the book, biology, okay, go on to it and then get straight into it. But I didn't really have a structure. I didn't really have a plan. Like in two hours, this is what I want to achieve. And this is very important. I really, really emphasize on this. It's very important. So going back to the biology example, the first step that you want to do in structuring your revision and your studying period is if we're going to use biology here, first figure out what topics you want to study and revise for. That's step number one. If you're not sure what topics you have to do, look at your weakest topics. That's the best place to start, all right? Because I'm sure there's so many topics in biology and you're thinking probably like, well, where do I start? Start with the weakest topics. Don't go for the strongest topics. A lot of people make the mistake of going with the strongest topics because it makes them feel good, right? When you know something and you do it well, it makes you feel good. And in your mind, you think that you're doing well, which to an extent you are, but you're kind of delusioning yourself in thinking that, or just because I understand the strongest topics, biology is okay. No, you need to focus on the weakest topic. Now, the second step is once you figure out the topics that you want to revise or study for, you need to figure out what you're going to do with these topics. Let me explain. Are you using these topics so that you're going to revise and learn the theory because you want to fill gaps in your knowledge because you're not quite sure on certain, certain topics and you need to just kind of go through the theory again? Or is it a matter of you doing some practice questions and then exam questions? This is very important. Okay, once you have the topics, you need to figure out what to do with these topics. And I know, I remember I made this mistake like, okay, I'm gonna do, I don't know, I can't remember some of these biology topics, but I'll do like osmosis, diffusion, photosynthesis, all these kind of things, right? But I didn't really have a structure of what I'm doing with these topics. And sometimes I would just kind of mix it up, just do uh, some revision and then questions, but it was just kind of like the wind, just like left and right. It wasn't very structured. If you have that structure where you know exactly what you're gonna do with those topics, you're not wasting time. You know exactly, okay, I'm gonna do this topic in biology, and for this topic, I need to first focus on the theory, so I'm not doing any questions, cool. So this is what I'm going to be doing, and I'm gonna focus on just understanding the theory, filling the gaps in my knowledge, and that is my main focus. That gives you a clear goal. Or if you know the theory and you understand it, now it's more of, okay, I need to do some practice exam questions. Okay, so I'm not gonna focus on the theory, I'm just gonna focus on exam questions today for this two hours or the one hour, whatever it is. Cool, so at least now you know with these topics, you're just focusing on exam questions. Can you see how structured this is? Can you start to see like the structure that you're putting in? It's very, very powerful because what it does as well, not only is it organizing your studies, but it's also cutting off 
wasting time or figuring out what you need to do. It's cutting off a lot of time. That, for me, I think one of the, the things that I look back on is the amount of time I could have saved. Because a lot of people think, again, I've said this in my previous video, a lot of people think that, oh, you have to work long hours. No, you don't. If you work quality hours and you actually put the focus and deep work, you don't need 10, 12 hours of study. And now when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, I could have saved a lot of time on my studies because I could have, if I was focused and structured in the way I was doing things, I would have had more free time to go and actually enjoy the other things. But at the same time, focusing and working really diligently in my studies. So now you've listed the topics that you want to do. You've then figured out what you're going to do with those topics. Either you're gonna be revising and learning or you're gonna be doing exam questions or practice questions. So the next step is you're gonna set yourself a timer. This is very important. So I want you to listen to this very carefully. You're gonna set yourself a timer of how long you're gonna to take to do this. So if you're gonna be revising and learning the topic, you need to set yourself a timer of how long this is gonna take you. If you're gonna be doing exam questions or practice questions, you need to set yourself a timer of how long that is going to take. Once you figure out how long it's going to take you to do this, and again, it could be an approximation, it doesn't have to be uh, exact, you stick with the time. I really, really have to emphasize on this, you stick with the time. And the reason why I say this, let's say for example, with biology, right, we use this example that we've done, we've, you've set out the topics and you're gonna do exam questions, for example, you're setting yourself a timer for let's say one hour, one, let's say one and a half hours, okay? So one and a half hours purely, you're gonna do exam questions on these topics. Let's say you're gonna cover five, 10 topics as exam questions for one and a half hours, okay? And the reason why I'm saying that you stick with the time is because it's going to give you a kind of good kind of pressure inside that you have to get all these things done within this time limit. Because think about it, when you don't set yourself a timer and you just kind of revise, and you see how long it takes or you just kind of go with the flow, you kind of go like this a bit. There is no structure, there is no deep focus that you have to get this done by this certain time frame. Think about that, it's very powerful because I remember when I didn't set myself timers, my brain would just kind of go left and right because it's like, oh, okay, it's fine, I'll just do it as it goes, like go with the flow. But when you set yourself a timer, what it's going to do, this is so powerful, it's going to create some pressure inside you that, oh my gosh, okay, I've got to get this done within one and a half hours. I can't have any distractions. My focus has to be in there. Your focus will improve dramatically. I didn't, I didn't click that, <laughs> right? Your focus will improve dramatically because you know, and your attention as well, your attention is going to be so on this. And what I would say is your timer, have the timer next to you. So as you're studying, literally have the timer, whether it's on your laptop, computer, whatever, have the timer there so you can see the timer, how long you have left. It will create a, how do I say it? Like a mental kind of timer in yourself thinking like, okay, I've got to really get all of this stuff done. And that your focus will just be on another level. Trust me when I say this, I have done this and it's so powerful. Even like I said, with these videos, I set myself a certain time that I say, okay, within two hours, I need to make a certain number of videos. That's it. It creates a bit of pressure in me that I have to be so focused and no distractions whatsoever because I have set myself a timer to do this task. So this is why I'm saying it's so important that you guys stick with the timer because what it's going to do is all your attention and focus is literally going to be on the task at hand because now you're working against time. Just, just, just think about that for a second. Think about what I just said. You're working against time. That means time is not on your side here which means that you need to now really focus and you need to put the intensity on the task at hand because you're working with the time. Well, you're working against time. And people might come and say this, but hold up, you're creating pressure here, that's not good. But remember, you have to understand what this pressure is. Is this pressure from exams? No. This is pressure that you created so you can increase your level of focus, you can increase your level of attention to get the task done. That's, that's amazing. That's a great pressure to have. For those people that say like, oh, I, don't, I, can't, I can't do the timer because it creates pressure. Okay, cool. If you don't have a timer, when do you know when to start, when to finish, and how much you're gonna get done? Because you're not really setting yourself a certain time frame to do a certain task. So you're kind of like the wind, it just kind of comes and goes. And when there's certain distractions, you're probably gonna be more vulnerable to those distractions because now you don't have something that's gonna keep you on the ground. Like, no, I've gotta do this because now time, I, I only have a certain amount of time. So think about that. Obviously everyone is different, but listen, I've been that person that didn't have a timer, did all these kind of unstructured way of studying and it just didn't get me anywhere. And I had to change this, practically I had to change this. So go from the start, start from the basic. Okay, let's me, let me build this up. And it worked phenomenally. Phenomenally? I can't even say the word. You guys know what I'm saying, right? 
it worked amazingly. Like I'm still doing these methods that I did now as well when I'm running businesses, when I have to do deep work, when I have to be focused, when I have to focus all my attention on the task at hand, I still do it, it's so powerful. So that's what I would say, set a timer for the task. The timer is up to you. It could be half an hour, it could be 45 minutes, it could be one hour, it could be three hours. Everyone is different. You have to set the timer that suits you. But what I'm trying to say to you guys is that you want to stick with the timer that you set. Now, you can come and say to me, but Vidish, what if I don't finish it? That's okay. That is okay. All it means is you just have to extend that. And if you don't, ex if you can't extend it because you have another subject to study, you push it on to the next day. That's not a problem. What I'm trying to get you guys to understand is the discipline in terms of you working effectively and productively. Okay. So whatever task you're doing, you want to make sure that you're fully, fully focused on it. Not a hundred percent attention on the task that you're doing. No distraction whatsoever. That is what I'm trying to get to you. Right. It's not about oh, like I said this before, like oh, work ten hour, work work hard work 10 hours work 10 12 hours man shut up man all these people saying 12 and 14 hours man seriously i would love to talk to these people and actually really understand how many how many hours of that 14 hours are you actually effectively studying how many of those hours are you actually going to the toilet going to the kitchen scrolling on social media going on your phone getting up and seeing what's happening in the window really let's 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 keep a real tally of that so all these people saying all these things man just ignore them ignore them because trust me i've done those things <laughs> And it didn't work. And I had to really radically look at the way I'm learning and change it from the ground up, build it up. These methods are methods that's gonna increase your attention and your focus. It can it'll work for everyone. But the thing is, you have to be willing to put the effort in. And once you're able to do this, my gosh, your level of focus and attention, it will go to a different level, like freaking Super Saiyan. Yeah, a bit of Dragon Ball Z there for anyone who knows. It's it's a different, it's, you're, it's a, it's a game changer. This kind of focus and attention, you'll be able to do this in other aspects of your life. Once you've done all those steps, the final step that you want to do is review what you've learned, review your study period, review what you gained from it, review what you've accomplished, let's put it that way. And this is also very important because what it will allow you to do is it will allow you to keep track of the things that worked and the things that didn't work. It's kind of like you're keeping a tally, right? Of, okay, I said I was gonna study 10 uh, topics for biology today in two hours, but I only managed to study five. Okay, so what does that mean? That basically means maybe 10 topics might be a bit too much. I'll have to probably reduce it to five and six. That's information for you to use for your next revision session. That's how you proactively study. It's, it's keeping tabs of what you've done and seeing where you can improve. At the same time, you can also look at, okay, I said I was going to do 20 exam questions within one hour and I managed to do 20 questions within 45 minutes. So that means I can increase my exam question intake from 20 maybe to 30 or maybe 20 to 25. Do you guys see where I'm going with this, right? This is why the review aspect is very, very crucial because it will allow you to see what is working and what is not working. Because when you keep studying and you're just going on and on, you don't really see what's working and not unless you take a step back and actually review your revisions. It's very important. Hope these methods make sense to you guys. And look, I'm not trying to bring people down. I'm really genuinely want to help you guys out because I know it's a very stressful period. I know you guys are going through a lot and I remember those feelings and it's not pleasant. It's not nice, especially when you're going through it. I messed up so many times in my life. I've had many failures in my life, but from those failures, I was able to find things that actually work, methods, strategies, Things that actually made me realize, oh shoot, this is actually a great way of doing this and it actually works. But I only realized this once I had the failures, right? And now I just want to make sure that I share this to you guys so that you guys don't make the mistakes that I've done. So hopefully you guys have taken something from this video and you guys can take some of these things into your own revision if you think it's helpful. If you don't think it's helpful and it's not for you, listen, no hard feelings, I get it. You have your own ways of doing it, that's great. But for those people that needed a bit of guidance and advice, this is what I'm saying to you guys. Okay, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.